Hello and welcome to Ithaca DSA Presents. I'm David Foote, an activist and organizer with the local chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America. And I'm joined today by Teresa Alt, who has been active in our DSA chapter for more than four decades. Teresa, how are you? Fine. Four decades, from what I understand, that's pretty much since the beginning of DSA. Were you around for the founding of the chapter? Well, no, because the chapter was, or local as it was then called, was founded as, as a local of the Democratic Socialist Organizing Committee, the predecessor to DSA. Uh, I was not around for that, um, but I found in some old papers the record of a meeting held on October 3rd 1978 in Ives Hall at ILR at Cornell. Um, and I wasn't aware of it. No wonder, because actually at that time I was in Yugoslavia. What were you up to in Yugoslavia in a, in a moment? Uh, Wales was doing research. Okay. So I've heard a lot of different things here and there about the early makeup of the organization, though of course um, it was still pretty small decentralized, different things going on different places. What was happening here in Ithaca when you joined? Okay, I joined DSOC. It was still a DSOC chapter at that time, about 19, I think early 81. And the, the local was doing union support because the UAW was working on organizing Cornell staff at that time. They were partly successful. They successfully organized the service and maintenance workers, but an election lost uh, among clericals and among technicals. That's unfortunate. Um, so then after these, or is there anything else you'd like to say about these union elections, how they felt? What, um, what maybe that pointed towards? Well, let me say, over the years, whenever there's some sort of union activity, you know, activity that needs community help, we're, we try to be there, and sometimes in a pretty extensive way. Mm -hmm. So we've yeah, been there for the Starbucks workers recently. Correct. We've been on several picket lines together, you and I. Um, so after these union elections were over, partially won, partially lost, uh, where did the chapter find themselves? What, what was the next project? Um, I would say what happened next was a lot of concentration on electoral work, which was pretty typical of DSOC throughout the country and the early days of DSA. Uh, and I was simply a local activist when DSOC joined together with the New American Movement to form DSA in late, late 1981, early 1982. Uh, different ways to count the merger. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was actually quite surprising to me how easily I became a member of the Democratic Ward Committee and thus of the Democratic County Committee uh, I really only had to show up for one good solid session of voter registration at a table outside what was then the grocery store in College Town, and I was invited to join. I mean, apparently they were so surprised to find somebody who was actually going to work <laughs> that it was very easy getting in. Mm -hmm. That's still something that's, of course, a need today. We yeah. have a lot of ideas, and anyone who is interested in doing anything at all is certainly welcome to join in. 
Um, so there were years of electoral work um, throughout the 1980s, uh, including getting Marty Luster elected to as our assembly person. That was a fairly, I mean, it wasn't strictly speaking a DSA project, but DSA people were involved in that. Uh, it included in 1983 changing the mayor of Ithaca from being a Republican to being a Democrat, a pretty wimpy Democrat, as it turned out, but a Democrat nevertheless. Uh, that was when Ben Nichols got his first foothold on the board of zoning. No, the Let's see, the Board of Public Works, a suitable place for an engineer. And this work intensified and reached kind of a, a high point, you might say, with the Jesse Jackson presidential campaign in 1988. There had actually been one in 1984 also, but that was smaller and seemed a little more distanced. And then in 1988, uh, it was a, you might say a priority action in many locals and very much for the rather few people remaining at that moment in the Ithaca local. And Jackson, I think, won the city, but not the county. He, but he performed way, way better than you would have expected from the general demographics of the area. I mean, this is this is Jackson. Jesse Jackson is black. This area is predominantly white. Uh, nevertheless, people went for his progressive messages. And then uh, the Reds, you might say, who had worked for Jesse Jackson, joined forces with some Green Democrats who had in 1987 tried to get Dan Hoffman elected as mayor and failed. Um, but the two joined forces. By now, Ben was a member of Common Council. Um, and in 1989, this, you might say, Red-Green Alliance pushed Ben through the primary and also through the general election. And he became, he, a member of DSA, very open that he was a socialist, became mayor of the city of Ithaca. Must have been a good reason to celebrate that red-green alliance around the holidays. Um, <laughs> a socialist in the highest local office, though. How did that feel? What did, what did Ben Nichols get done? Um, yeah. Well, you might say, sad to say, it was a period when then Mayor Mario Cuomo was terribly cutting the aid that formerly had come from the state to local governments. And so you might say the biggest thing was that in the face of horrendous budget cuts, and I mean, throughout the whole year 1991, the budget that was already adopted was being rewritten on the fly. Um, but no layoffs. That was the accomplishment. However, as time went on, there were a few more positive, let's say, visible accomplishments. Uh, for instance, think of the little Hale, Alex Haley pool by GIAC, operated by GIAC, I believe. Uh, down at uh, Court Street and Albany Street. That was an accomplishment, a narrow victory for the Nichols administration. 
uh, there is also a triangle of housing on North Side near the Science Center by the creek. Um, Alice Miller Way, I forget exactly what the other streets are called there, but uh, it blends in nicely with the community. You, if you're just walking around, you wouldn't know that it's that oh, yeah. it isn't older housing, but uh, yeah, if people need to know the names of the streets, they can walk them themselves. It's very nice. Uh, yeah, well, as I said, it's it's right where kind of the creek meets, I think Hancock Street, and uh, and near the Science Center. So that would probably be the next street over would be first, I think. So that was some, it, it admittedly had a rocky start as so-called mutual housing, but eventually was handed over to INHS and is now INHS housing, Ithaca Neighborhood Housing Services, the, our not-for-profit housing provider. And another Big thing was that Ben Nichols took on Cornell University. And I guess having come out of the place, he kind of knew it and knew how, how bad things could be, or maybe he didn't even know how bad things could be. But uh, at one point to get to actually get a handle on them, he held up their building permits. Um, unfortunately, he hadn't cleared things sufficiently with the building trades about it, and they got riled up. Mm -hmm. um, and this was, well, I think, I think the lesson is check all your bases carefully before you take a big step. Um, and in fact, in the election of 1995, for what were at that time two year terms for mayor, uh, he lost to a sort of so called independent, really, I would say, a Republican in independence clothing. Sure. Well, it shows you the horizons and the limits of work through electoral office, um, which is still a big part of our local chapter's work, but certainly not the only yeah. area where we're fighting for democracy. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what steps were next. I'm, I'm sure there was some, some feeling of both success and um, maybe some interest in doing other work. What else, yeah. what else was going on? Well, we did step away from electoral work at that point. And I would say the work went on in two streams. Um, NAFTA, the, the North American trade, Free Trade Agreement had passed in 1993. We're now up to 95 or the years after. Uh, the struggle over trade agreements was ongoing. There were new threats. Um, MAI, the Multilateral Agreement on Investments, the World Trade Organization was getting uppity. Uh, and so there was ongoing work, usually in coalition with other groups over, over those, you might say, threats to democracy, because that's really what they were. It was threatening to overrule what government could do. Um, and at the same time, we concluded that maybe the biggest problem locally was lack of a source of good news. Um, and there was some disagreement about how to do it and things went two ways within the organization. Some people went into trying to reform the existing sources like WSKG, or to try to found a community radio station, which turned out to be a 
decade long process, I think. And others uh, just said, we'll take what's available, which was cable television, community access cable, and learn how to use it. I was in part of that group. In fact, uh, in the end, both groups were quite successful. Um, and the two streams, you might say, came together in kind of 1999 and the millennium um, when the battle in Seattle took place in November, at the end of November of 1999, that was when various groups, both trade unions and uh, environmental groups confronted a meeting of the World Trade Organization in Seattle in the streets and caused big trouble. Uh, we had a, a, a kind of answering demonstration and rally on campus. And we were there with cameras. A couple of us from DSA, Ally is not in DSA. And that became, you might say, the very first Ithaca DSA Presents show, although we didn't actually produce a show, have a show on cable at that time, but we had an outlet through a different program round about Tompkins County. And that, of course, is the show we're recording now. Um, and I, if I can put a brief plug in the middle, the DSA chapter is still doing, of course, this show as well as other um, public education and, and community events. Um, such as our Socialist Night School series and Marxist Reading Group. And if you'd like to learn more about getting involved or attending either of those, just send the chapter an email and we'll connect you. Um, so you mentioned the battle in Seattle. That brings us right to the eve of the new millennium. Um, right. Of course, a lot of things changed early in the new millennium. How did the chapter change? Um, well, actually, the chapter didn't change all that much at that moment. And neither did the focus where I mentioned things like MAI and WTO. Uh, on April 16th of the year 2000, there were huge actions in Washington um, opposing simultaneous meetings of the World Trade Organization and the um, World Trade Organization and International Monetary Fund, both of which were doing a lot of damage around the world. And a lot of Ithacans organized. Uh, there were three different groups going from Cornell, one from, from the Cornell Organization for Labor Action, another uh, Greens at Cornell, and there was a more of a community-oriented group uh, that involved Pete Myers uh, and some DSA people, uh, and we called ourselves the Ithaca Sharks because we carried uh, inflatable swimming pool sharks that were labeled IMF, Loan Shark, and WTO, Loan Shark. <laughs> and actually Ithaca Sharks continued as an organization for quite a while after that. Um, and I think probably was, you know, overlapping with DSA, but bigger than DSA. Do you, do you uh, know if those sharks are still around anywhere? Uh, no, there is a kind of, maybe the email list still exists. The organization does not. However, a com committee of that organization morphed into the Living Wage Coalition, which then became the Workers' Center. And of course, we still work with the Workers' Center repeatedly. So in a sense, some things have, you might say, come full circle. Well, that's really cool. Yes, of course, still allies of ours. 
um, standing with us for workers' rights. Um, but of course, things have changed somewhat since this period of uh, sort of low participation relative to the big challenges that were against all of us. Um, how is this, what brought us to the modern DSA? Uh, different things. Um, we do have to look also at what was going on in national DSA. In the early years of the millennium, national DSA, due to many mistakes, was not doing very well, had very little money, therefore hardly any staff. Um, and you might say got into some bootstrapping, especially after a few years into the millennium, they, well, almost a decade into the millennium, uh, received a bequest, a significant bequest, were able to hire the current national director who was much more dynamic than the previous one. Uh, there was systematic fundraising and things started to take off in the national organization. So for instance, in 2015, I believe, they had their drop student debt campaign and the Ithaca local, like locals all over the country took part. I know in Ithaca, we tabled, we made numerous mistakes. We didn't really succeed all that much in actually the drop student debt campaign, but we were trained when later in 2015, we had the Run Bernie Run campaign. And now I think it's starting to sound familiar in later 2015 and 2016, we had a very lively Bernie Sanders campaign. And for instance, when we tabled on College Avenue and down in DeWitt Park for Bernie Sanders, people started to, started to even join the organization, but at least got on our mailing lists and were paying attention to us. So that when <clears throat> late in 2016, Trump won, people knew where to go and they joined. And I think you were one of them. That is correct, yes. Um, I took, there was a few months where I was aware of the Democratic Socialists of America. I was seeing people recommend linking up with this organization. And though I had found that there was a local chapter, um, financial challenges at the time. And I, I felt like I needed to pay dues before I could start going to meetings. I've learned since then, no, there's no real barrier to participation. There's a lot of people that we work with. There are subsidies and low income memberships and all kinds of ways that people can connect with the work um, without seeing sort of a barrier to getting involved, whether that's financial, the amount you think you might know about what goes on politically. We're all figuring this out together. Um, and again, if, if you're willing to get involved and participate a lot, it was the fact that I went to a lot of meetings in my first year that allowed me to run as an officer of the chapter the very next year. So definitely a, a good way for people to plug in. From your point of view, with this southern, sudden growth, the, the sort of expansion of the possibilities, did the chapter's work change, improve? What, what was that like? Um, let me mention one other thing, though, that happened outside of DSA. Uh, the community got a community radio station, a real FM station, WRFI. And while WRFI technically doesn't allow uh, organizational programs, uh, so it's th in theory my program, the Inquiring Socialist is always an outlet for DSA people's messages. And 
what we're recording right now will run as a program on WRFI. Uh, so a new resource for us, you might say, a new job for us. Um, actually, both nationally and locally, this really swift growth was challenging. Um, I mean, the national found that it could not hire new staff fast enough to keep up with the new needs of so many members and so many, I mean, going from something like, I don't know, 15 chapters, 10 of them active to now something like 200. That's quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, staff has by now kind of staff growth has caught up, you might say, with what were already the needs two or four years ago. Uh, and locally also, it's been pretty confusing. Now, something about this community is, it is very transient. So some of the people who were most active in 2017, 2018, 2019 are no longer living here. Uh, they were graduate students. <laughs> they wrote their theses, they got jobs. Um, and jobs typically in other places. So this, this constant turnover has, I would say made things more difficult. And that may be especially a college, you know, an Ithaca thing. Sure. Well, we're, we're running low on time, but just from my perspective, we've certainly seen those challenges you mentioned in the few years that I've been involved. People coming and going and being unable to carry on projects that they really feel passionate about here in Ithaca. Um, but for those of us who are long-term residents, um, it's, it is still exciting to see energy coming out of young, committed activists. So we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep accepting people and, and building alongside them. Um, so this has been David Foote talking with Teresa Alt about the history of the Ithaca chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America. You can find us on the web at IthacaDSA.org. Again, this is Ithaca DSA Presents. I've been David Foote, your host. Thank you for watching. One, two, one, two, three.